Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to a video that is hopefully going to be a bit of a treat. I'm looking forward to it anyway. An unboxing and initial impressions of a smoking hot Hamilton Intramatic Retro Reissue. Now I think Hamilton are an interesting brand, regardless of where you sit on the horological spectrum, if you're into the value for money stuff or even the top end Swiss luxury pieces, I think most people give a nod of respect to Hamilton. Part of the Swatch Group now obviously, great history, great heritage, great back catalogue from which to plunder, as you'll see in a couple of minutes. And I think by and large they offer pretty good value for money. You generally get plenty for your cash with Hamilton. Now I didn't just buy this one, it is kindly on loan to me from a chap called Warro. Now Warro is a fellow YouTuber, he has got a channel where he reviews motorbikes. I have been looking at a lot of motorbike content on YouTube over the last couple of months since I got my own license. I did a two day course on one of those CB125s, followed by a theory test after which some idiot gave me L plates and a license to drive on the roads of Australia. Not only then did I look at a lot of Warro's content, I ended up buying a bike from him. Now, I buy a lot of watches on this channel, 52 no less over the last 12 months. Warro, check this, has bought 40 motorbikes over the last nine years. That is a commitment both to your passion and to your channel. So can you do me a favour? I think that passion should be rewarded. He is sitting just under 10,000 subscribers. The YouTube algorithm treats you differently once you hit 10k subs. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description of the video. If you're into bikes, or even if you're not into bikes, I would love it if you could give him a sub. He's a watch guy as well, which always helps. There's various videos there about some Rolex and Tudors he has owned in the past. He lives in Orange in country New South Wales. I went up to see him on the train a couple of days ago. There he is, standing outside his house with the bike that I bought from him. I then rode the bike a couple hundred K back down to Sydney and it was fantastic. Surprisingly fast for a scooter, don't tell Mrs. John what. While I was there, he said, hey look, I've just got this Hamilton, I thought you might like to unbox it, and gave me the watch on loan. Warro, you're a bloody legend, mate. Anyway, enough nonsense, let's flip the camera and get into the box. All right, so clearly today it's not gonna be a long, slow, teasing unboxing. We're pretty much down to the underwear already, so I may as well show you the money shot. There it is. Warro went for the reverse panda, he also went for the mechanical. That means that this is a 2021 H3849130 as opposed to the automatic that was released in 2020. And my God, would you look at that thing. It is just about perfect. Let's peel off the stickers and look at it a little bit closer. And the big one, the big dial protecting wrap here. Oh, that is just gorgeous. And one final sticker to peel, the case back. There it is. I must admit I am a little bit in love with this one already. Let me give the movement a wind by rolling the crown forward. There we are. That's the small second indicator over there at the nine ticking away. Let me also do one more thing. Let me pull out the crown here. It's 100 meters of water resistance and a push-pull crown. And let me wind it back from 10 to two to 10 past 10 so that I can bring in the comparison shot. This is essentially a reissue of a Hamilton Intramatic Mechanical from 1968, and it is a faithful reissue, is it not? The only differences I can spot from this photograph are the tachymeter marking there on the tachymeter scale, and the fact that they've chosen to put mechanical rather than the T for tritium, because obviously this doesn't have tritium, it has superluminova. They've even gone for the same 14er look, the same colorway. It is achingly beautiful, is it not? What are the dimensions then? I measure it at just under 40 mil in diameter. I measure it at 39.9. 14.7 mil thick though, it is fairly girthy. This is a Hamilton H51 movement. It is based on a Valju 7753. The Valju 77 series are thick. This one is a little bit slimmer than the automatic rotored version of the same watch that they launched in 2020, but it's still not slim, is it? Lug to lug is okay though. 49 mil lug to lug and a 20 millimeter lug width. On this supplied mesh, and it's a cracking quality mesh as well, this one weighs in at 150 grams on the nose.
Everything's high polish, high polish case, high polish mesh, and high polished mechanism on that mesh. That is gorgeous. I'll show you that in a minute. Chrono pushers are unsigned and high polished, and it is the Hamilton logo. It is the vintage Hamilton logo, as replicated on the dial there as well, the vintage Hamilton script and logo replicated on the crown as well, and that is a piece of box dome sapphire crystal. I think there's a reasonable amount of anti-reflective undercoating, this being an overtly retro reissue, retro style piece. You wouldn't expect it to be crazy. You also wouldn't expect any coloration on that AR, so I think they've done a pretty good job with it. And it is a nice high quality mesh strap as well. I looked at the Aloha GMT that featured a stave mesh earlier on this week. This one is pretty similar in terms of quality, and I do like this mechanism. High poly now, one thing to note there, that is not the same Hamilton font that they have used on the dial. So it has the old, slightly italicized retro font on the dial and a new, the kind of current font on the, the clasp there. Perhaps that's something they should have addressed, but never mind. Double pusher here and it pops open. Now, one thing I did notice, not that easy to size. You need to flick that little part there up by getting a screwdriver into that recess and giving it a flick. So not exactly on the fly. You're gonna to have to be careful sizing this one therefore, but the whole thing does feel really nice, really high quality. Quick look at the case back again, screw on high polish. I'll be very careful not to scratch this one for Warrow, though I've no doubt he will scratch it in the first day of use. Water resistance, 100 meters, that's pretty good. Push pull crown and non screw down pushers, 100 meters is just about as good as you'll get. And as mentioned, that one contains the Hamilton H51 movement. There is an image of the Hamilton H51 movement, 27 joule hacking and hand winding. They modified it from the 7753 and they managed to crank the power reserve all the way up to 60 hours. If I was in for one of these, I would definitely be opting for the mechanical rather than the auto. Not only do you get a slightly slim or watch on wrist, but with 60 hours power reserve, you only have to wind the thing once every two days. And unlike some of the other Powermatic ETA modified calibers, they haven't done anything to the beat rate. It's still 28,800 vibrations per hour, though you'd be struggling to notice the eight ticks of that tiny second hand per second. So they've pushed up the power reserve without slowing down the beat rate. Now being value based, it's gonna have a fantastic action when I, oh yeah, so snappy, so nice. So one click to start, 30 minute, and it will just keep going on and on and on until the movement runs out of juice. One push to stop and one push there, and it's a snap back reset. And what do you think of that? I've got a seven inch wrist and I think that thing looks just about perfect. They do this one on a leather band as well. Bit of a toss up really between the two. Obviously, if you do want to get it wet on a reasonably regular basis, or if you live somewhere hot and sticky, then perhaps you're better going for the mesh, but the leather is an option for you. That dial is just magnificent. And that's the overhead shot. Hands are silver, applied indices are silver as well. I think it's very much angle dependent whether they do jump off that black dial or not, particularly as they have used a little bit of Fotina, both in the two registers and in the, the hands and the indices themselves. But overall, that's not too bad, is it? So because I don't have long with this one, I'm gonna chuck in a loom video here. The loom is okay. It's got that kind of old radium style green glow because the hands and the indices have been fotinered. But look, any loom on this watch is gonna be a bit of a bonus. And my God, is this thing gorgeous when you get it outside into some natural light. That dial layout is magnificent. Because this one's the mechanical, as opposed to the auto, it deletes the date down at six o'clock. It was a very well integrated date down at six o'clock, certainly much cleaner than the 7750 with the date at three o'clock. But I think the fact that this watch is mechanical just takes it up another notch. That dial is stunningly simple, yet simply stunning. There is obviously a standard Panda, the black on white version of this one if you prefer, which is also available likewise on the mesh strap or a, a couple of different leather colors. Now I haven't talked about price yet, have I, other than alluding to the fact that I think Hamilton offers pretty good value for money. These are 2,000-ish, just over 2,000 Swiss francs, which is just over 2,000 US dollars on the mesh. I think the leather comes in at a quite similar price. Not readily available here in Australia. Warrell had to import his. He paid around three grand Aussie landed. Not many discounts out there on these ones either. I have noticed it is still a very hot model. I don't think that's a bad price at all. You get a fantastic brand, a fantastic looking retro reissue. 
super faithful to the original. You get a well-proven movement with 60 hour power reserve, 100 meters of water resistance, sapphire and crystal. It'll hold its value very well if you do decide to flip it because it's a Hamilton and they are in demand. But I don't think too many people are gonna be flipping these. This is a little bit special. Good choice, Warro. So there you have it, a truly gorgeous Hamilton. And say it quietly, I don't think it's too bad for $2,000. If you're into Hamilton, why not check out the Interstellar, one of my favorite watches from 2020. If you're into chronographs, why not check out the Stratton Special, one of my favorite chronos of all time. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.